Vision Quest video series, a step-by-step -step guide to holistic health. This series is comprised of 40 programs, each addressing a specialized area of holistic healing. In this program, we'll explore acupuncture. Roger Yonka, uh, doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. And uh, my background is that uh, I always wanted to be a doctor since I was a little child, since my father passed away when I was quite young. And uh, in college, I went to um, uh, pre-med and got a job in a hospital and everything. And I realized very quickly that that was not what I thought medicine was going to be or should be. And therefore, um, I became a student of the uh, world's uh, original cultures, literature uh, systems, I guess you would call it the poetry, uh, the dramas, etc. And uh, interestingly enough, in primitive cultures, I found the kind of ideals of healing that I thought had maybe been lost here in the Western world. So I pursued traditional Chinese medicine, been to China five times, uh, really amazing experience. China, very far away philosophically as well as in miles. And I have had the wonderful privilege of being the director of a clinic for many years and being a consultant for numerous uh, hospitals and HMOs as there is a very fortunate turn occurring in the uh, healthcare industry. Acupuncture is an ancient therapy developed over thousands of years. There are 265 to 2,000 acupuncture points identified by various schools of thought. In this program, we will review numerous acupuncture techniques that are now being embraced in the Western healing arts. Acupuncture is an ancient Chinese therapy where patients are treated with needles pierced into their skin at particular points. These acupuncture points are located along invisible energy channels called meridians, which are believed to be linked to the internal organs of the body. The needles used in acupuncture are said to unblock or release an increase or decrease in the flow of energy called qi through the meridians. I suppose if you had to define acupuncture, it's insertion of fine stainless steel needles into particular points on the body. And these points are related to uh, what the Chinese would call uh, channels of energy and by puncturing these certain points you balance up or uh, cause a, an equilibrium of energy within the body. In traditional Chinese medicine the body is said to be a balance between two opposing yet complementary natural forces known as yin, the female force, and yang, the male force. The yin force is passive and tranquil and represents darkness, coldness, moisture and swelling while the yang force is aggressive and stimulating and represents light, heat and dryness. In Chinese therapy, an imbalance of yin or yang is believed to cause illness or disease. For instance, too much yang is believed to cause sudden pain, inflammation, spasms, headaches or high blood pressure, or too much yin is believed to cause dull aches and pains, chilliness, fluid retention, discharges, or tiredness. Acupuncture therapy is aimed at identifying any imbalance and correcting it by inserting needles at appropriate acupuncture points. Traditionally, there are 365 points used in acupuncture. However, more have been discovered over the centuries, and most modern acupuncture charts may display up to 2,000 points. The Chinese medicine, we can see that there are about 14 mind meridian in the human body. In this meridian, in the, in the meridian, there are different points, and different points have different function related to the different organs. So, for different conditions of disease, you select different points to balance the energy and to strengthen the body functions. For example, the stomach 30, the stomach 36. In the in the leg 
is in the area. So this pawn can strengthen the brain and stomach function. It means it can strengthen the energy and blood function. Most important points used in acupuncture can be found on the 14 meridians, each named after an organ which it represents. These organs include the heart, the small intestine, the bladder, the kidney, the gallbladder, the liver, the lungs, the colon, the stomach and the spleen. Another two organs found along the 14 main meridians include the pericardium, which controls circulation and sexual activity, and the triple heater, which controls the endocrine glands. Both these organs are not recognised by Western medicine, although they are very important in acupuncture treatment. There are also two extra meridians found on the body called the ren or conception, and the dew or governor, which run vertically up the middle of the body. In traditional Chinese medicine, physical, emotional and environmental disorders in the body are believed to alter the flow of qi, making it either too fast, too slow, blocked or diverted to the wrong organ. An acupuncturist aims to rebalance and restore the flow of qi to its normal rate and thus allow the body to regain its harmony and allow healing to occur. When a patient first presents themselves, they'll often present with a presenting symptom or sign and from there we then do a differential um, diagnosis to, in traditional Chinese medical terms, um, to formulate a treatment principle and then acupuncture points are then added according to the treatment principle. We diagnose in terms of, in basic terms of yin and yang, uh, but that is further delineated into patterns of energy according to the channels, the uh, zhang fu or the internal organs of Chinese medicine and also external causes of Chinese medicine as well. In the West, acupuncture is used mostly for the treatment of painful ailments such as headaches, stomach and chest pains, joint pain and back pain. However, in China, acupuncture has also been used effectively in people who suffer from allergies, anxiety, insomnia, stress, tiredness or ulcers. Chinese acupuncturists also claim success in relieving withdrawal symptoms after giving up smoking or other addictive habits. Acupuncture has been practiced in China for more than 3,500 years However, the exact date of its origin is still unknown. Legend states that this complex healing system developed when soldiers were believed to survive arrow wounds in battle and recovered from long-standing ailments by the insertion of needles into the body. The word acupuncture is a European term meaning to prick with a needle and was coined by a Dutch physician named Willem ten Rijn who introduced this ancient Eastern practice to Europe following a two-year stay in Nagasaki, Japan in 1683. The first medical textbook on acupuncture, dating as far back as 400 BC, was titled Nei Ching Su Wen, which means the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine. In the early 19th century, British doctors began using acupuncture to relieve pain and for the treatment of fever. In 1823, the first edition of The Lancet, a famous medical journal, carried a detailed report of the successful use of acupuncture for the treatment of rheumatism. Since then, numerous countries in the West have accepted acupuncture as a form of treatment. Okay, Mary, we've been in place about uh, 10 minutes. I'll just get those off for you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just relax, you won't feel a thing. One of the important in, and interesting things that's been occurring over the last 10 years is the, uh, uh, the idea that there does exist a number of different styles of acupuncture. Probably the major ones that we're aware of um, within the West are Japanese acupuncture, which is different than Chinese acupuncture, and also there's some other sub-schools as well, such as the Worsley approach over in England, and uh, Mark Seam in America seems to be um, 
uh, postulating that there are other avenues of um, using acupuncture. An acupuncturist uses fine stainless steel needles which are inserted, usually in a quick painless and bloodless procedure, and rotated between the finger and thumb to draw or disperse energy from a particular point. Individuals having acupuncture usually report a feeling of numbness or tingling over each point and along the corresponding meridians on the body. Most acupuncturists insert the needles so that they just penetrate the skin and may use as many as 15. However, in general, the more experienced the acupuncturist, the fewer needles he or she will use. Acupuncture needles are a range in both size and also diameter as well. We get anywhere from, the needles range in anywhere from half an inch to six inches in size and in varying um, gauges or, or uh, diameters of needle uh, thickness. Um, of course, obviously, the thicker they are, the more sensation will be felt. And one of the characteristics, for example, of Japanese acupuncture is to use very fine needles. When you put the needle in, you, sh you ha also have different technique. Mm -hmm. The technique just to help to rid the pain. The pain usually cause is when you insect the needle in this short, very short period of time. After the needle passes the skin, the pain is not much, not much painful. So the technique is skill now. They will be uh, right to the pain. In, uh, the pain, <clears throat> if you have the good technique, and then you will help to. Um, reduce the pain when you insert the needle. But after you insert the needle, and also use different technique to balance the body. You can use the reducing technique if the, if the uh, condition is excess, or if you feel the energy is excess. Or you can use with reinforcing technique when the disease condition is deficiency or when you feel the energy is, is deficiency, or you can use the even technique. The insertion of points are a long way away from the origin of the pain or where the pain's existing is a, is a common phenomena with treating acupuncture. And this, this relies a lot on the channel physiology. Um, for example, the bladder channel is, a, is one of the longest channels, energy channels in the body, starting at the little toe, running up over the back and finishing in the inner canthus of the eye. By puncturing a point on the ankle, it can, because of its channel connection, can affect the back of the head. So one of the points near the ankle, Kun Lun, bladder 60, is often used for occipital or back of the head pain. Traditional acupuncturists use the Chinese form of diagnosis and follow the ancient rules of Chinese medicine to select various acupuncture points. He or she will use the tongue diagnosis, skin and texture colouring, hair texture, posture and movement, breathing and voice texture to determine a patient's medical status. A traditional acupuncturist will incorporate diet, lifestyle, exercise, quality of sleep, phobias and reactions to stress and will also use the 12 pulses of traditional acupuncture to ascertain an individual's health. This process is called palpating and refers to the way in which acupuncturists diagnose disturbances in the flow of qi in any of the organs in the body. The uh, pulse treatment is an essential part of Chinese medicine. Um, as you saw me demonstrate before, uh, when we palpate the pulse we look for a number of different qualities. Uh, and they, they can indicate some underlying energy disturbance. We look at things such as speed, shape, uh, quality of the pulse, depth of the pulse, and all these things give us an idea of what type of um, condition the energy is in in the body for that particular person. The pulse, um, in both hands they will be um, show up different relation to different organs of the body. Mm -hmm. For example, the left hand will relate to the, the heart, the liver, 
and kidney. And left and right hand relate to the uh, lung and spleen and kidney as well. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you take the power, you take three levels, from the superficial, and medium, and deep level. And three, this three level, they will be show up the different uh, quality of the power and the internal organ function. <clears throat> Um, and so if something is, is weak or over-energized? Yeah. The pulse, we can say, have, diff have about 28 cons of the pulse. But the we mainly use is the A pulse, mm -hmm. like fast, slowly, or full, or, full, or weak, mm -hmm. or um, floating, or deeper. Mm -hmm. So this, this different part will show up different things, different conditions. Qi is a term that's often heard in relationship to Chinese medicine. The character itself was broken up into two radicals. Um, the first radical means um, rice that's cooking. The second radical means vapours flowing up towards the sky. So I suppose the connotation is it's some type of energy that's, that's uh, ethereal or invisible, um, but it has the possibility of uh, giving the body life. Ancient Chinese practitioners of acupuncture have established certain points over the centuries for specific ailments. These may include lung seven for headaches, Kidney 1 for hypertension, stomach 42 for toothaches, stomach 45 for insomnia, bladder 54 for lumbago, or governor vessel 23 for nose bleeding. The local points for each specific organ, such as the digestive system, are as follows. Liver, bladder 18, gallbladder, bladder 19, stomach, bladder 21, colon, bladder 25, small intestine, bladder 27, and intestines, conception vessel 4 and 9, stomach 25, or bladder 24. This, these channels of energy are actually related internally to the organs, and by puncturing one of these um, uh, channels, you therefore affect the, the chi of the organ, and also the chi of the channel as well. And they, in the West, we've given them numbers but the Chinese have always associated names with them and very poetic names. Points such as um, this one here that's a very common one we call Hegu, which means joining of the valley. Now you can see why they got that name, because it's a valley actually joining. Um, the other point I mentioned before is three leg mile down on the leg, stomach 36. Um, that's, that's again been thought to be, be given its name because it's three, uh, three a anatomical inches below the, um, the knee. Um, Another point here is on the elbow, it's called cook of pond, and obviously it's because the energy pools there and that the elbow is often bent. So there are very uh, poetical, uh, metaphoric uh, indications lying behind the, the names. When you use acupuncture to treat this, to treat the disease, you also have to take a long consultation to get all the information from the patient. First, you can you first have to ask some ask different questions, and then you take the poll, get take the poll and look at the tongue and fat and the face. Sometimes when you go to power plant is the domino to get different information. The power and the tongue we can say is the window of the internal organs. After that you're going to use traditional Chinese medicine theory to diagnosis. Mm -hmm. After the diagnosis you may find out the patient is causing by deficiency of the chi, a deficiency of energy, or deficiency of the blood, or energy, or blood, 
speculation or another kind of the fact cause this problem and then we are going to choose the pawn because different pawn we have different functions so we choose the pawn according to the dilosis hmm? so some pawn can help to move the brown some pawn can help to move the T and some pawn can strong some the uh, can tonify the T and tonify the brown or some pawn can remove the dam and heat from the body. So that we have that all these things we need to do before we use the needle to treat the people. For example, the case we treat with the sciatic nerve, with dialysis is this sciatic nerve caused by the stagnation of the energy and blood and also have some attack by the cold. So I treat, I choose the brother 62 to move the energy and blood and choose the brother 40 to mainly to move the blood as well and choose the local area the, the um, go brother 31 to help to move the chi move energy and blood and clean the coal as well. And the ashy pawn, where is the painful? That money is caused by the coal or stagnation of the blood. So we use the, the moxa as well to help to clean the coal, to remove the, the blood and relaxing the muscle. After insect the needle, first we do the manipulation to find the uh, the, chi, the to find the the energy the sen to find the sensation, and then you lift the needle in the body. The needle will be retained in the in the body about 24, 20 to thirty minutes, and each five minutes we we are going to do some manipulation to strengthen the, the energy, let the energy floating, floating through the meridian to help to, re, to help to remove the chi and blood. After the needle rep, uh, retained in the body about 20, 20 minutes to half hour, we're going to destroy the needle. When you draw the needle, we also use different technique. If if you dilute this, the uh, the disease is causing, but if the disease is excess, when you draw the needle, you don't need to cover the pawn. Mm -hmm. If you dilute the disease is deficiencies, when you draw the needle, you have to close the pawn. Don't let the energy running away. And how do you how do you do that? How do you how do you keep the energy in? Just use use the uh, use the left hand to close to press the to press the pawn. Okay. <laughs> Could I just have a quick look at the painting, please? Okay. Yeah, your your tip of your tongue there looks a little bit red, and you've got a little bit of a quiver to it as well, which means could associate. When Mary first presented, um, she presented with um, basically signs such as palpitation, tiredness and weakness. Um, going through a series of the diagnostic um, procedures, looking, seeing, feeling, smelling, touching, um, we came to the conclusion that, the, that the, she fitted into a syndrome that we call heart chi deficiency, which means the energy of the heart is low. So the, the treatment principle is to tonify the chi of the heart. Now, in, in Mary's case, we used two particular points that had that effect. The first was a very uh, well-known and famous acupuncture point on the leg called Stomach 36, or Tsutsan Li, and that has the effect of tonifying the energy within the digestive system, and that, is, that flows on to affecting the whole of the body. The other point we used was called Shen Nun, or Spirit Gate, and that has the effect of uh, calming what, what the Chinese call the shin or the consciousness uh, and has a very calming, relaxed 
relaxing effect on behalf. I also use an extra, extra point between the eyebrows, which just generally symptomatically uh, is effective for insomnia and calms the spirit, the Chinese would say. And have a pulse diagnosis. How did you, what, what can the pulse uh, tell you and what did it tell you in the test? Right, the pulse in this case indicated um, the, what I was looking for there was what the, fre the frequency of the pulse, how fast it was. In Mary's case it was uh, slightly slower than normal. It was also a weak pulse. The quality of it was not as strong as what you would expect. And there was also a little bit of intermittency associated with the pulse, which means the energy wasn't pushing the blood through uh, in a smooth fashion. So that to me indicated that the energy of the heart was low and needed to be tonified. Cupping again was probably one of the modalities often associated with mechanical stimulation on the surface of the body. The main premise of, that is, of acupuncture is that you can stimulate or affect the insides of the body through external stimulation. Now as you've seen before that can either be through um, the insertion of a needle, through modern techniques such as laser or through techniques such as cupping which, uh, which again stimulate the acupuncture point or the energy on the surface or the channel of the body. Uh, cupping is used basically to uh, draw chi and blood to the area. It's also used to disperse chi and blood to the area. There's a technique that we often use called moving cupping where you move the cup up and down the body and try to disperse the chi. M the main uses of cupping are in things such as uh, respiratory conditions and also muscle aches and pains as well. But are there points that you put it in? Or? Yes, you can put it on certain points and most of those points are associated with the bladder channel which runs down the back. Uh, for example, if you're treating a lung condition, often you'll put it over a couple of points called bladder 13, uh, fei shu or uh, bladder 12, uh, feng shu, which is wind shu, the wind shu point and the lung shu point. And they generally have the effect of um, uh, affecting the energy of the lung. Oxybustion actually started separate from acupuncture, they believe. We think it came from more the northern or colder parts of China and it is actually still used with Tibetan medicine as a different, as, a, uh, as its own type of uh, uh, modality of treatment. And basically, moxibustion involves the application of heat to the acupuncture points on the body. Uh, traditionally, it was always done with direct moxibustion, which means a little bit of the moxa herb was actually put on the point and burned on the point, but this would often leave a, a blister. Um, and obviously these days there are other methods that we can use to apply indirect heat to the body. That may be such things as the use of a moxa stick, or it also may be the use of uh, moxa on a slice of ginger. Electro is a common, uh, is a, sorry, is a more of a recent phenomena and basically it involves the uh, insertion of a little electric current into the needle and acts basically to uh, increase the effect, uh, the subjective sensation of the needling with the patient. It's often used where pain is the main problem, that if, if you're treating energic problems with the body, often it isn't used. Um, and how, how, what are the, can you change the frequency or, or the voltage? Or? There are a number of different parameters that are associated with using electro. Um, the first one is the frequency, um, the second is the intensity, and the third is the mode of uh, transmission of the frequencies. Um, again, scientific research has shown that some of the lower frequencies, such as 4 hertz or 4 uh, pulses per second, tend to turn on a different system within the body and the higher frequency tends to turn on another different system within the body, um, releasing different neurotransmitters. So therefore it's important to be able to you know, know what, what you're treating with it and what the best parameters are for treating with electroacupuncture. Um, and I guess it's pretty safe, I mean you're not electrocuting anyone. They're all run off batteries so there's very little chance of electrocution, yeah. But there's no chance of electrocution. There are some contraindications, again you have to be careful um, on what patients you're using and it's, it's not a common, common usage with acupuncture, probably 
a small percentage of uh, people that present with acupuncture get electro. And how about the laser? Laser again is a, a recent phenomenon. It's probably been in use 30 years, 20, 30 years. Uh, again, it works on stimulating the acupuncture, acupuncture point through, um, through light energy. And again, scientific research has shown that it can be effective for, more, for a range of different ailments. Um, the most uh, effective things are such as uh, pain, uh, muscle tears or, or ligament tears, um, and also uh, ulcers as well, which have been shown to be effective for treating it. Skin ulcers. There are a number of precautions that are associated with um, getting acupuncture. They, they may range from minor things such as fainting or bruising, bleeding around the point, to other ma major complications such as a pneumothorax, which is a puncture of the lung by a needle, or a puncture of the internal organs. Um, obviously it's important when you do get acupuncture, you go to someone that is trained um, exceptionally well in anatomy and understands the body in, in detail and can use acupuncture in a, in a very safe manner. Uh, up till about 15 years ago, uh, needles were reused and sterilised, but you find in the last 10-15 uh, years with the advent of um, AIDS and also other infectious diseases that uh, pre-sterilised needles are, are pretty well used by everyone doing acupuncture. Um, they're very cheap, they range in price from 5 to 10 cents each and for the amount of, uh, uh, or for the relief of mind that's associated with using pre-sterilised needles, both from a practitioner's point of view and a patient's point of view, it's well worth that extra couple of dollars. It's quite interesting you mentioned the medical view of acupuncture. That's changed over the last 20 years. I remember reading the 1974 NHMRC report which said that acupuncture was a load of cod's wallop. And in the late 70s they then started discovering endorphins within the body. And then in 1989 uh, the new NHMRC report came out that validated that acupuncture was effective for pain. They discovered mechanisms that it could work for. So therefore uh, most uh, clinical research, Western scientific research, validates the effect of acupuncture, mainly for pain, but I'm sure over the next 10, 20 years, as more research is done, that there will be other mechanisms that are elucidated to show that acupuncture is very successful for a whole range of different uh, 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 conditions. I think acupuncture has changed in China over the last 40, 50 years as well. Um, obviously, as an as a art, it has to develop. And I think by coming to the West, it again has uh, adapted slightly to the Western culture and the Western needs and Western disease states and conditions, um, rather than st stuck to the traditional um, concepts in, in China. That doesn't mean to say we don't use concepts such as qi and yin and yang and things like that. But obviously the Western people, or the Western person does have a different uh, lifestyle, a different cultural background, different social infrastructure behind them, and therefore they may suffer from different conditions than were present in China 200, 2,000 years ago. So yes, it's an ongoing development within the, within the art and practice of acupuncture itself. And that's, that's actually evident by the Japanese. The Japanese, again, have adopted towards what they wanted over the last 500 years and it is, has distinctive features of, uh, that are quite, um, quite different than the Chinese approach. Currently, there are about 100 different countries that use acupuncture to treat the disease. <clears throat> like Japan, Korea, French, Eng England, and American, and Australia. <clears throat> and where do you see that going? Do you see it more countries and yes. becoming more accepted? I think it will be more, acupuncture will be more and more popular 
in the future and more countries uh, will be accept this therapy. I suppose I see the future of acupuncture going in the sense that uh, with the global unification of, of our world with increasing telecommunications that it will be integrated into a more uh, uniform form of um, therapy around the world that it will not just be uh, owned by China that it will be a world medicine and as such that it will be integrated in with aspects of Western medicine and also other traditional medicines as well. Um, I think it's got a lot of growth as yet uh, and a lot of research needs to go on to elucidate what what is the best things that acupuncture treats and how effective it is for certain conditions so that we can actually work out what are the parameters of um, of its effect on, uh, on disease and disharmony within the body. As a form of healing, the insertion and manipulation of acupuncture needles is fairly simple, yet uses a very ancient and sophisticated form of diagnosis, analysis and practice. This ancient therapy is becoming increasingly popular throughout the Western world as a complementary form of medicine, helping to alleviate many ailments safely and effectively.